Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I'm going to be covering how to review your mocks and time practices effectively and how to waste time reviewing, okay? So one of the things that I often tell students when I have lessons with them is that reviewing is a form of procrastination, right? And that might seem like a little bit excessive and perhaps a little bit clickbaity um, and but, you know, I, I do believe it is true to some kind of extent, right? So often a lot of the stuff that students do in terms of reviewing is kind of useless. Um, it's not really as useful as it can be. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through each of the, the main sections and kind of like talk you through exactly how I would review. So this is a mock that I actually did on my channel. So if you guys haven't checked that out, I'd highly recommend you do that. So if you go to the um, walkthrough um, playlist on my channel, and you click on a uh, live full mock. Um, I've only done one so far. So if you have a look at this, you'll be able to see this is the score that I got. And whilst, you know, I, I can definitely do better, I think, though I thought, but I thought it was definitely a nice um, kind of um, mock to go through, you know, there were questions I got wrong, questions I could have improved on, um, and I'll talk about exactly what I'm going to be doing in each section. Okay, so let's get straight into it then. Um, so the first thing is verbal reasoning. So with verbal reasoning, this is probably the area to review the least, I believe, okay, because the reason being is, like, when it comes to reviewing, the golden rule of re reviewing, not just for verbal reasoning, but for all sections is, you should be looking to try and do two things. So the first, what you're trying to do is you're trying to think about how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking? Because obviously there's a reason you click the answer because you thought it was right. Okay, apart from the guessing ones, you click the answer because you thought it was right and because you thought you saw that word somewhere or you thought that was the answer. There was a certain technique you did. So therefore you were thinking in a certain manner. But obviously the answer wasn't right because you should have thought in this manner. And so therefore it's about that change, right? You have to create some kind of mindset change. So when it comes to VR, if you think about it, there's no real point in you redoing questions and stuff like that. So when it comes to VR, when I was reviewing questions and when I do review questions, um, it would just be reading what the answers is and understanding their logic. So let's take this one. So the viewing corridor is designed to ensure that one a person standing outside St. Paul's Cathedral will have an unobstructed view of at least one green space. And so I think here it says something about, um, where is it? Uh, okay, so viewing corridor, um, fit, okay, so while new cities such as New York or Chicago made use of iron and steel frameworks to construct skyscrapers like the Empire State Building, formerly opened in 931, standing at 102 stories, a height that overshadowed St. Paul's relatively modest 111 meters, London chose to favor protecting the skyline of its old buildings. To do so, city planners added to their list of protective views with the first of these protections initially outlined in 1710. The, the, there currently exists 13 protective viewing corridors in London with eight of these protective views of St. Paul's from various locations, such as Alexandra um, Palace in Greenwich Park. Okay, so I put false, oh, sorry, I put can't tell for this one. So it says false here because it says it's true that somebody outside St. Paul's Cathedral will be able to see the green space of Greenwich Park. As mentioned, it's not the purpose of the viewing corridor's design. Honestly, I think I was a little bit confused here. Um, but yeah, honestly, reading back at it, I probably shouldn't have got this question wrong. So I was thinking that because it mentioned this example, that this is the way that I should have, you know, it was giving, telling us that that was the reason why, but it clearly wasn't, right? There was no link between saying that this is why it was designed. So I in inferred too much. That was the take home message. So it doesn't mean I need to redo the question. Once again here, so like 17, maybe this was like a silly mistake mistake that I made or maybe it was just I just didn't really understand it so here these are the final paragraphs Spring's house has built for fast flowing water how the rip floor appears like river rocks safe to infer okay fine so maybe I inferred from the wrong place so here I inferred because I remember something about reading prairie here his famous prairie style design I inferred from the wrong place fine so VR is probably the one you can move on the fastest like I said just look through them and have a look at some for example the ones you flagged what you were unsure about so possible because of the translator's notes whatever it is you know, it's important to understand, okay, why did you get it wrong? Did you infer too much? Did you take too much away? Did you uh, misread the question? Whatever it is, and try and make a, a mental note of that so that doesn't happen again in the future. Remember, how were you thinking versus how should you have been thinking? Now, when it comes to decision making, okay, so on to decision making. So I know, like I said, you might think, oh, well, you've barely gone over a lot of verbal reasoning, verbal reasoning, but the point is you don't need to. There is really not a lot to go over here. And the point is, it's just about understanding why you went wrong. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to repeat every single question. So it's kind of pointless because obviously you've done this question before, right? And you clearly got it wrong. Um, so there's no real point in doing it again because then it doesn't really re represent anything. Because obviously this time you're more likely to get it right because you have more time and, you know, it's not really representative. So syllogisms, for example, so you can see here in decision making, syllogisms let me down, right? So one, two, three, four, six marks that I dropped. Um, quite, quite important, I would say. So I know that syllogisms is what um, kind of let me down here. So I'm going to look at the syllogism. And importantly, remember, it's not about looking at every single one. Look at the ones that you got wrong or the ones that you were kind of felt a little bit dodgy about. OK, so for example, you know, it, I might have guessed this one was right, but also look at the answer for that. Look at where it comes from. So here, parenting that is not gender neutral expects boys and girls to wear different colours. So I said here, parenting is not gender neutral if it forces boys and boys to wear blue and girls to wear pink. 
parenting most often results in boys wearing blue and girls wearing pink, but gender neutral parenting most often does not. Okay, so parenting that's not gender neutral expects boys and girls to wear different colours. Yeah, that's probably going to be true actually because of what it said here. But I think this is weird because this is almost in a way a slightly inference type of question. Um, but yeah, I think I just I just misunderstood it and I just didn't think that this was mentioned, but I probably should have just read this a little bit more clearly. Once again, I can go back, perhaps look at how my diagram was written. So that's one thing you can do with syllogisms, you can redraw your diagram. Um, but it doesn't have to be, you don't, it doesn't mean you have to do, redo every question, but redraw your diagram and see if, once again, if you put this statement down, does it make sense with your diagram? Did you need to adjust your diagram? Was your diagram written down properly? That's assuming you did use the arrow method. And so I'll go through and I'll check. So here, for example, not all genealogists are local history experts. It says most local history experts are genealogists. So actually, oh yeah, this statement could be true because I guess potentially um, we don't know. Because um, so, not all means 1 to 99. It could be the case all genealogists are local history experts. Yeah, so remember, creating the hypothetical. So I failed to create the hypothetical there. Um, I probably shouldn't have got this one wrong. That was a schoolboy error. Um, and normally I don't do this, bad on syllogisms as such. So perhaps I can also think to myself, was there kind of like an overall reason for this? Was I in just perhaps not? the greatest of um, times and I was doing this. I remember I was doing this at like 10 o'clock at night, so probably not an ideal thing to be doing. Um, so once again, remember, how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking? So once again here, so some entertainers are escape artists, some magicians are escape artists, all magicians are entertainers. So is it safe to conclude some entertainers are um, escape artists? Yes, because when it says some magicians are escape artists and all magicians are entertainers, yeah, you would have been able to say that. And um, that was once again a very, very silly mistake. I don't think I should have got that question wrong, and normally I probably wouldn't have. Okay, so once again, so it's just about understanding the differences. It doesn't mean I need to like go over every single question. You can see I'm going through this kind of um, fairly fast as well, right, in terms of like reviewing it. Country will not go to war, country X does not attack. Okay, I can read the answer. Okay, we do not know whether country I would go to war under other circumstances. So the problem that I got wrong with this question is that I thought these are the only circumstances where the country would go to war or not go to war. But there could be other things as well. So I failed to create an appropriate hypothetical. That's the idea. Once again, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, how how was I thinking? How should I have been thinking? And then I'm trying to implement that, take that further. There's no point in me do, like redoing half these questions, especially the ones I've got right, because you know, there's, it's it's not going to teach me anything new. It's not going to alter the way that I was thinking. And that has to be kind of our end point. Okay, so let's have a look at 13. The shouldn't students be allowed to listen to music while sitting because music helps them concentrate. So in this thing, I thought, oh, I just thought about fairness because I thought it would apply to all students. But I guess the, the main point was about the concentration. And they're saying if they use headphones in low volume and others aren't disrupted, so it talks about not affecting the concentration of others. So actually, I probably should have got that one as well because I was a little bit disappointing. So that kind of idea, understanding like why you got questions wrong as opposed to etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so here and also another thing i'd say is one but don't just check the answers you got wrong wrong because obviously you can guess an answer and get it right so just check some of the ones you got right in case you had guessed them okay so here in order to benefit yeah so i i, I didn't guess this one but i did find it some more tricky i was thinking if it's perhaps between one of these two but nonetheless i went with this one because i thought it talked talk more about benefits um so okay cool what about 21 how did i get 21 wrong Told that a drought reached a record low in the US in the first week of April with only 6.1% of areas. Readings were recorded in the drought monitor. There must have been a percentage higher than 6.1% in those 18 years. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, okay, so I got quite a few of them wrong. So maybe, I mean, this is potentially a question I just probably just didn't understand it at all. So maybe what I do is I just take it slowly and just try and digest the information. And once again, think about, okay, why did I put this? Why should I have not put this? And just go through it, so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so maybe 34. Um, I think I talked about this question in, in the actual mock a little bit, but if I didn't get it, that's fine. Okay, and another thing that's really important to do just while we're on the, the kind of like the, the idea of decision making, one of the things that I would do after this. So, for example, you can see I had a particularly weak set of syllogisms. Well, I was particularly weak at the syllogism. So, what I'd probably do now is probably go to practice questions, go to decision making go to syllogisms and I would just sit there and probably I'd just do like 10 question sets. The reason I'm going to do it untimed is because if you do 10 minutes of time syllogisms, it's going to be a little bit dodgy. But obviously try and do it as fast as you can. So 10 question sets, do it as fast as I can, right? And I'll probably get hopefully a decent amount. And then do another 10 question sets. And what that will do is it'll really help me drill it into my head, hopefully. Okay, just one thing to do. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do that after every mock exam, but that's just one thing that I recommend that you guys could try out doing. Okay, so then same thing again. So here, if I got, if I got, um, you know, this is a logical puzzle. This was a tough logical puzzle. So this is one instance where perhaps I could try and do it again if I wanted to. Uh, I could see if it works or not. Um, if it didn't work, it didn't work. Uh, nothing else I can do. 
Um, but honestly, it looks like quite a ridiculous question. Um, but actually, the average time is only 42 seconds, so perhaps I've missed something. Okay, so once again, go back. So this is a question that I could potentially do, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, logical puzzles, some of them are hard, some of them are ridiculous. You probably won't get one this hard on the official UCAT. Um, yeah, so yeah, just something to think about. And then, so once you do review the questions you got wrong and the ones you're a bit dodgy on, and once you've changed your mentality or tried to understand which part of your mentality was wrong, then you can, like I said, go on and then do some more practice in like a certain area if you want to really refine it. Um, okay, cool. So that's it for decision making. I think decision making is probably one of the longer ones to do. Um, the reasoning sh should be much shorter. But even then, you can see it doesn't really, it shouldn't take you too long because I think one of the problems is when I ask students, how long have you, have you, do you spend doing a day? They say, oh, do four or five hours. And I ask them what do they do and they say, oh, I do a mock. Um, and then I just review the questions after and I think, wow, you spent two hours reviewing. That's quite a long time. Or even an hour reviewing is a really, really long time. Okay, you do not need to be spending that long reviewing because if you think about it, the only way you get better at it with the UCAT is applying techniques over and over and over again until you can't not get them right. Okay, so if you spend your time reviewing, obviously you've got to understand where you're making mistakes, but you've also got to implement the change in mentality that you get from reviewing, right? So from that perspective, it really doesn't make sense to spend so long reviewing. You know, you can definitely shorten up your review sessions and make sure they're more kind of concise in terms of, okay, do I really need to be doing this entire question again? Will it actually benefit me? What's the point? So sometimes you can just ask yourself, what's the point of me redoing this question? So for example, with question eight, it might just be, oh, try a tricky question. But redoing question five and six when you've got the majority of it right doesn't really make any sense. It's just about understanding that one bit that you got wrong as such. Okay. When it comes to quantitative then, so similar kind of ideas, but importantly, I think it depends on like how you got them wrong. So yeah, you can see I got the odd question wrong here or there. So I think one was that, I think I just looked at the wrong numbers for question one. Um, this one, I think I, uh, da, 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 each of the four destinations, oh, I didn't include Australia, so I missed that bit out. So you can see, there's no point in me redoing this question. Right, I, it wasn't a knowledge error. It was because I genuinely missed a piece of information out. So in the future, I just tell myself, or oh, maybe you can even make a note of it. If you keep finding that you keep making silly mistakes, just like a, uh, you know, like make sure to just be on alert um, for more information, or just like read the info under the table if you're, um, if you're, you know, take like an extra second or two just to really quickly read the info under the table. Because you can see, I did it with plenty of time. I did it in nineteen seconds, um, or I thought I did it. So I did have, have the time to take that extra few seconds to just have a quick glance down. How long is the train on the Stirling line? This one I completely just didn't understand at all. Um, oh, I think I tried to get there, but then I just messed it up right at the end. So once again, I think it was just that case of taking a step back from it and just having to redo it. But like, that's fine. I, I, I understood the principle of the questions. It was okay. And this one, I think I must have done something wrong. I can't remember what it was. Once again, I'll, I mean, obviously when I did, if I'd reviewed this straight after I'd done the mock, then it would have been easier because I would have been able to remember um, how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking. Once again, you can read the answers and you can be like, okay, so this is how I should have done it. How did I do it? And hopefully if you do remember, then you'll be able to be like, ah, I shouldn't have gone down this way of thinking. I should have gone down that way of thinking. Okay, so that's how you do it if you, so like I said, pick out the occasional questions. Remember, you can look at the ones you flagged as well, um, just so you can um, just remember um, or confirm your theory was right or your way of thinking was right. One thing I would say is if you do get entire sets wrong, so let's say in quantum you got whole set wrong here or whole set wrong or a lot, lot, like a lot of the set wrong, that probably means that there's perhaps a bit of knowledge you're lacking or there's something you didn't understand about the table or the diagram or the graph, whatever it is. So once again, try and Make a note. I mean, you don't, by make a note of it, I mean most of the time, I mean mentally. But if you want to, you can write it down. Um, sometimes people like to create like question about the question they got wrong, but like that's kind of not useful because you're just gonna end up with about like a two hundred page Google Doc that just doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, but like right, like like I mentioned, it's more key to write down the key important ideas. Okay, I got this wrong because I thought tax brackets work this way, but now I fit, but now I realize they don't work that way. Okay, so now you've learned something. So then what you could do is you could perhaps even go and learn tax brackets properly. So for example, Medify has some UCAT section notes, or just as a cheeky plug, you could even just check out my own tax bracket videos, um, or whatever it is, type it up online, uh, find out whatever it is, um, go and do that, or ratios or proportion, whatever it is. So just learn that specific area that you're struggling at. Um, and try and understand it before you then go and just have more questions okay so that's the key idea in qr so if it's like odd question you get wrong so have a look at them why did you get them wrong try and understand that make a note of it if you need if it's a silly mistake no need to redo it if you don't get the question at all for example um 
or if you had no clue about it, like I said, try and revisit the content. And then once you revisit the content, see if it, you know, you can always do the hide answers option thing and see if you can redo the question yourself. Okay, that's important. And one other thing you can do as well is in quantitative. So let's say I I did some quantitative and so you can click here in the performance section. So I let's say I did some quantitative. It turns out that I in my test I messed up answers that were to do with money. I can go to the money and I, it'll show me every question I've got wrong on money here. So all I can do is I can just sit here and I can just power through some more questions. Okay, so I can just sit and I go like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to chug through a load of these questions. So bang, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. And these will be all the questions that I've got wrong on money. And so hopefully, you know, because I got it wrong in the mark, I tried to recover the content and then I went back and I just plugged through these money questions. Hopefully that should definitely help me to improve. So it's kind of very similar to what I said about in decision making where you can go back and you can do like short bursts of like syllogisms if that's what let you down or like interpreting information or whatever. And then, um, yeah, just something like that. Okay, so like I said, it's not always necessity. Like I don't, I don't normally tend to do that. That's probably because I don't have too many problems with QR. And it's probably just, it's normally the silly mistakes that generally cause, that causes me trouble. Okay, and then finally, so over to situational judgment. Then. So with situational judgment, kind of similar idea. It's about how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking. Okay, heard that Miss Basco's patient died during surgery. Um, even rude, serious says the people, we all go through different times. Medical professional, I different. Okay. And being a doctor is a difficult job. Okay, so Caden should have compassion. So the way that I was thinking about it is that um, it doesn't really, I thought it doesn't really matter if things happen. In, in the sense of, in the grand scheme of things, you know, a doctor has a right to um, be you know, kind, of kind to people as such or whatever. So um, in the grand scheme of things, I thought it was not important. But then there's something slightly important here because obviously patient dying is, you know, a very, very serious uh, situation. So obviously it can have an impact. But I was kind of like the other side, basically, like my points were right, but it was just that the patient dying had more of an impact than the other bit than like the doctors, um, you know, um, not allowing difficult emotions to affect other people. So I was almost there, but that's what was wrong about my kind of idea. And so same again. So I would just go through and I'd be like, oh, OK, so this is why I got that wrong. OK, I shouldn't have thought about that. And so there are sometimes some um, questions that you just have to learn as well sometimes scenarios that repeat one of the things that I say in SJT is it's, it's okay if you get questions wrong if it's a new set but if it's sets and questions you've seen before and you're still getting questions wrong that's a little bit of a problem okay so that's why you, when you're reviewing it SJT is probably one of the ones that's almost long in a way to review I mean it doesn't take that long but um, you know what I mean like there's actually stuff to learn there's scenarios to go through Okay, so that's what I would do. So 34, for example, sit with Thor and talk with, to her to take her mind off the pain. So Sarah has been referred to A&E, prescribed a painkiller, waited for a scan. Over here, Sarah's nurse, pain is not lessened, which nurse says you need to wait longer. Kim is concerned, she has been with Kim, it should have taken effect. Kim says Sarah's less than upset. So I thought this was very appropriate, but could lift the spirits, but it does not provide any medical treatment or take away pain. That's a very good point, actually. I didn't really consider that. So next time I will. Okay, that's the point. Don't make the same mistake again twice, hopefully. So same here, so tell, um, uh, da, 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 da. so, um, pay for Hamza's treatment myself, asking him to pay her back when he has the funds, this is paying for the, what amount to a conflict of interest and could have serious consequences, okay, so I guess this is something you're not meant to do at all, um, okay, fine, cool, I didn't, I didn't realise that, so I didn't go down that option, not the end of the world, like I said, okay, um, but importantly, as long as you understand it and you learn it and you keep it for the next set that you do. So hopefully I don't make this mistake again. OK, so I know that has been quite quick, but I do want to, I do want to make the videos a little bit shorter because I know that you guys are obviously very, very busy and you have better things to do than listen to me yap. But I hope that was very, very hopefully comprehensive and clear. Please do leave a comment if it was helpful. But the point is that when you're reviewing, it's always this golden rule. How, sh how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking? Okay, and then from there it's kind of up to you to decide, okay, so do I want to do more practice on such an area, kind of really hone my skills, and then jump and do like a mock exam or do something else um, and just really try and fully uh, utilize and maximize my score from there. Okay, so here, oh, quantitative, I messed up a geometry question, I'm going to do a load of geometry questions, I'm going to make sure I know my formulas, I'm going to go to the study notes, made by has, whatever, um, and then just recap from there. Okay, and so hopefully this way, not only will I hopefully be able to save you guys time, but more importantly, stop you guys from needlessly um, kind of spending too long from re reviewing, meaning you have more time to practice and more time to implement all of the techniques and tips, tricks that we have um, to help you get the highest score possible. Okay, so thank you very much as always uh, for all of your support. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I can't believe that we're hitting numbers like 2.1, 2.2K. Um, and um, I will see you guys in the next video. And please do comment what you would like to see next. Okay, um, see you guys later.